Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Living Streams International, we meet behind the trade fair, behind the Zenith College. Now, at La. Now, this morning, I'd like to bring quite a controversial topic, and I'm sure some people might be. Listening. But guess what? There's no harm meant. I'll caption this morning's sermon as Baptist Insults. Now, I, I have friends in, in, in the Baptist church, so I'm not talking about you, so please don't get too worried and don't get too uh, frightened where I'm going. But i just like to capture th my thoughts in this perspective, and I'm going to talk about John the Baptist. You remember John the Baptist, um, and I'm reading Matthew chapter 3 from verse 1 to 17, verses 1 to 17, you remember? Now, uh, you remember, now, John the Baptist was the one who, when Jesus was coming and, and to be baptized, he said, uh, are you, uh, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He said Jesus must increase and he must decrease. He, 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 he spoke so nice about Jesus. Even at one time, he said, The tongue of whose sandals I'm unworthy to untie. And then he even went on to say, that, uh, Listen, I mean, uh, John the Baptist was present when he, he, he was going to baptize Jesus. And Jesus, and he said to Jesus, no, 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 you have to rather baptize me. And Jesus said, no, 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 you, it is necessary that all scripture must be fulfilled. Now, John the Baptist was the person who said, behold, the Lamb of God. One of the first people to acknowledge that Jesus was the Son of God. And Jesus had a mission. And then he even spoke. The Bible said his mission was to prepare the way of, of, of Jesus. Prepare you the way of the Lord. If you remember, it was a voice crying in the wilderness. And he began to say, listen, I indeed baptize you with water, but he is coming and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And so John the Baptist was the one who had really, really, really spoken well of Jesus and at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. But then John the Baptist was in trouble, of course. He went to be a married counselor, was poking his nose into other people's marriage affairs. And, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, he hears Jesus is doing this, you know, uh, uh, per perhaps prostitutes are wiping his feet with uh, their hair and they are pouring alabaster box of uh, oil upon uh, speaking out oil or spiking out oil on, 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 his, on his feet. And uh, man, I mean, the story is here where he's, he's sitting in, in Pharisees' house and tax collectors' houses like uh, Zacchaeus and, you know, and he's, boy, he's all over the place. And then John the Baptist sent a, a question to Jesus, and I felt that that question was a very, very insulting. He said to him, hey, listen, buddy, are you the one that is to come, or are we to look for another? I mean, what he was saying, I, are you really sure you are the one that is to come with all these things that I'm hearing you? You get it, uh, sitting in Pharisee's house and perhaps drinking wine, I'm sure not the one that, you know, makes you walk on your head and all that. But he began to question the legitimacy of Jesus and his ministry. And if you were, he began to question not the legitimacy of Jesus' ministry, he began to question the legitimacy of Jesus' presence. And he said, should we look for somebody else? That means you don't exist. What you're doing, you're not exist. And he began to question the methodology of Jesus, if you remember. Jesus, in, in, in his response, he said, uh, tell him that I do this, I do the blessed is the one who is not offended in me. And all those, and then he tells him, tell him that I, the sick are healed. And all. So it was a question of methodology. And all these things were really, really, for me, they were very uh, undermining, and not just undermining, they were questioning the legitimacy of Jesus, questioning the legitimacy of his methodology, and questioning many, many things about Jesus. But here's the principle. Did you see how Jesus responded. Now, if I were Jesus, I'm going to be very, 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 very offended. And I'm going to reply him, good measure. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. What kind of nonsense is this? Forgive my language. I mean, how dare you? Yet, I'm the son of God. You were the one who put me in the water. You saw the heavens open, the spirit descending like a dove. What kind of crazy questions are you asking? But listen, when Jesus said to him, tell John that the sick are healed, the blind see, the, the, the lepers are healed, 
the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news preached to them. And he said, and blessed is the man who is not offended in me. Now, I thought at that time, it ends there. Jesus should end there. He doesn't need to do anything because that guy has really damaged his reputation. But then Jesus turned to people and said, folks, what went out into the wilderness to find? A reed taken by the wind? No. I mean, John the Baptist is not just a flippant person. What went out for to see? Men clothed in soft raiment? No. No. They that are clothed in soft raiment are in king's palaces. So John the Baptist is a man who is rugged, who is not after the comforts of life. He is not swayed by every wind of doctrine. This is a solid guy. And then Jesus went on one more step further, and that just blew my mind. He said, listen, this is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, who shall prepare thy way before thee. And then he said, listen, um, uh, uh, amongst men born of women, you get it, none is greater than John the Baptist. I said, those who are, I mean, but, I mean except those of the kingdom, and the least of the kingdom are greater than him, because they have a revelation he doesn't have. Yeah, they're going to have a revelation of an encounter with the Holy Ghost he doesn't have. But he said, amongst men born of women, none is greater than John the Baptist. When Jesus began to say this, uh, hey, excuse, if I were Jesus, if I were in the time of Jesus, I'll tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, buddy, the guy just insulted you. Or the guy just said nasty things about you. But then Jesus went on and appraised uh, uh, medley. And Jesus went on and uh, praised spree and said nice things about about John the Baptist. And then look at what he said. He said, listen, amongst men born of women, none is greater than, this. get it? And he said, do you think you want to see a prophet? More than a prophet. This guy is a solid guy. And Jesus was extolling the virtues of John the Baptist. And he even went on to say, look, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, the, the praise that Jesus heaped on John the Baptist now, Jesus refused to eat the cake of offense. Jesus refused to go sit at John's table of offense. He said, you can, you can question me. You can say everything that you don't like about me. You can say everything. I'm not going to join the party. I'm not going to give back to you good measure, Price down, shaking together, running over. And I was saying to myself, ah, Jesus, bah. Because if I were me, I would choose my Hebrew and my Greek and my this thing and take my time and write a poem or do something and let shake the very core of your foundation. But Jesus spoke peaceably. Do you know why? And I realized this. Thing. Jesus said, I will never rubbish the old. And here's the thing. Because one day, Jesus is going to need the name of John the Baptist to save himself from a scrape. Oh, yes. One time people came to you with stones and they said, are you the son of God? And if he had replied, yes, they would have stoned him. But Jesus called upon the name of John the Baptist. And he said, of John's baptism, is it of men or of God? And the people could not answer. So you see, that day when they came with the stones and the cudgels and the mattocks to do damage to Jesus, it was not Jesus in prayer, prayer. Father, my God, in the name of Jesus, help me. No, 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 no. But you know, he mentioned the name of John. And the, he knew why. He needed the name of John to escape from a scrape. So you see, if you remove the foundations and if you throw them away out of offense or anything, one day you're going to need those people. And I can tell you this. One day. You're going to need John the Baptist. So you know what? Ignore the Baptist insults. And don't, don't pay attention to it. Speak well when they throw it at you. Especially dealing with the men of old. Especially dealing with those who've gone on before you. Especially dealing with people in ministries, your boss and all those other people who have sat on that seat before you came there. You need to speak well of them. Because the time is going to come, you will need their favor, or you will need something from them. So do not remove the ancient landmark and do not throw their name to the dustbin because one day you are going to need it. So suffer the Baptist insults, tolerate them, and one day you'll be glad you did. See you later.